Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today's February 6th, 2020, and this is our episode number 538. Today's randomly selected company is called Plascar. Plascar makes auto parts. According to them, it makes and commercializes auto parts. Plascar is a company that I have never been an investor in. And the reason is strikingly simple. The company's net equity as of 2017 was negative. So uh, it's a company that is in distress and as mentioned in several previous episodes, it's not something that I understand well enough and it hasn't been my focus so far. Let's take a look at uh, recent, more recent developments for Plaska. So I did download the DFP for 2018, given that the last one I looked at was from 2017. So from this one, the net equity here is minus 515. So this trajectory, unfortunate, unfortunate for them, uh, just takes me in a direction that is not typical at all because if you see uh, past episodes uh, you know hundreds even in companies that looked like this I was drawing out the other numbers but for Plascar I won't because the trajectory is so markedly negative and increasingly so so instead of going here for the numbers in 2018 i will go to the itr from 2018 and see what's been going on there let's see the net equity here hmm interesting so now we have seen a reversion uh so here it's minus 192. okay so we'll take that So this makes me at least want to go back to 2018 and, and get the other numbers. So let's do that. So we can start with liabilities. So short term, 764 million and long term, 184 million so we're talking about 948 million liabilities here loans short-term loans 444 million and long-term loans I don't see it I don't see any so 444 for 2018 and given that uh, the net equity is negative so the uh, yeah net equity is negative debt to equity and liabilities to equity will forcibly be negative so you know the well the modulus of this number right uh, the scalar uh, property of this number is doesn't work like that positive number so what I'm trying to say is if it's a minus but a very large number here so minus 100 that actually means like it's getting closer to to good okay so current ratio current assets 55 million divided by current liabilities of 764 so here we clearly see a company that's holding very very little cash relative to what it knows it will spend so it only makes sense with a company that's going through rough times okay 0 0.07 revenue might give us a sense of you know what are the odds of them uh, turning around the situation uh, sometime soon as you can see here revenue in 2018 was 347 million so from 
uh, a net, net equity of minus 515, they had a revenue of 347. It's even you know extremely surprising that over the, the course of 2019, the first three quarters, they were able to revert this out of revenue like this. So it would be interesting to see how they did it. Earnings minus two hundred million and fifty eight minus two five eight two hundred fifty eight. Okay. Free cash flow for twenty eighteen still. Look at their operating cash flow minus four hundred and four hundred and eleven thousand. So pretty near zero if you consider. And investment cash flow of minus three. So, minus three. One thing I forgot to do here. No, I did not. I was thinking about uh, 2019. This is a full year, so there's no projection to be made. So, as you can see, like these numbers are telling us, like this company is going through difficult times. And indeed, I mean, absolutely not a company that I would be investing in uh, for. for uh, you know to be a partner at, at this stage uh, but it makes one to stop and think you know in context so this is an industrial company this is a car part company uh, what has been going on in Brazil you know between say 2013 and now so let's recapitulate so industrial companies in Brazil have been going through a tremendously rough it's not just like few years, like decades, right? So uh, it, it's a combination of competition from Asia, a market there, uh, you know, regular uh, regulation that's just making industry there, you know, like dominant. To to be f quite honest with you, and it's not just about regulation, really. It's like about a you know a historical shift in the workforce the ability of you know to mobilize you know a billion and a couple hundred million people to potentially you know work on industry so it's it's rough and here you know we the, all governments that had passed here simply have not desired or or wanted to make our industries competitive and on top of that, or maybe as a consequence of, of those policies, uh, we have had a, a rough economy here. So, you know, several industrial companies are not doing well. We do have things that are more tied to, to the commodities themselves. And, and those, you know, in relative terms, they, they do okay here. And we end up being a, a, the commodity country that we're famous for, you know, so it is what it is. And uh, the consequence here, like bottom to top, if you will, is that it's hard to be, to be uh, optimistic about, about Plasker, even though we, of course, we root for, for the sector here. Uh, let's see what happens there. So this does it for the episode. Um, in our next episode, we will uh, look at a different company, probably Brazilian, and if so, most definitely uh, available through the stock exchange. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, and especially if you spot mistakes in the analysis, please leave a comment in the video. I'll be delighted to write you back as soon as I can. If you're not yet a subscriber and you're here listening to me, uh, maybe consider becoming one. I'll be delighted to have you here with us. Have a wonderful day and see you next time.